Hey guys, so I wanted to tell you guys that I bought a whole bunch of books. Don't know why I wanted to tell you guys that, but I bought a whole bunch of books. They were really cheap on Amazon, so I was like, let's get them. I was watching a lot of booktubers and they were suggesting a lot of these books, so I wanted to check them out. The first book is The Silence. In the darkness of underground cave system, blind creatures hunt by sound. Then there is light, there are voices, and they feed. Swimming from their prison, the creatures thrive and destroy. To scream even to the whisper, to whisper is to summon death. So I was really interested. I've seen this on Netflix and I watched it and it was pretty good. I liked it at least, so I'm really interested in reading this book. Because I like to read the books of shows and movies that I watch. Usually I watch the movies first because I like to get an idea what the characters look like because I don't have a very imaginative mind although I write books. I can't pick up details very well when it comes to people explaining them to me uh, so I usually have to get an idea what they look like from watching something which is what I've been watching next is The Vampire Diaries. I heard that this is a very good show and a very good book so I wanted to check it out. Um, it's about vampires, obviously. I, there's not really much of a, a description on the back, just a uh, description of the characters. So I'm really interested in reading the book because I watched some of the episodes. I've watched, I'm um, season one, episode 13, and it's good so far. I'll be, you know, I'll be uh, honest with you. It's pretty good so far. So I just wanted to read the book because I'm watching the show. Oh, The Silence is by Tim Lubbon. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And The Vampire Diaries is by L.J. Smith. The next one is by Na Naomi Novik called Uprooted. This one I actually did find on BookTube. I'm going to butcher her name so I'm not going to even say it. Uh, loves her valley home in a quiet village. But the corrupted wood stands on the border full of relevant power and its shadow lies over her life. Her people rely on the cold driven wizard known only as the dragon to keep the woods dark forces at bay, but he demands a terrible price for his assistance. Every ten years, one woman must be handed over to serve him without question. Sounds really good. I, there is not a show or a movie about this, I don't think, that I know about. Um, so I'm actually going into it blindly, <laughs> which is cool because I really want to read it because I heard it was really good and I like the way that the boot booktubers would describe the book. I've seen a couple booktubers mention this book, so I was like, well, it must be good, so <laughs> I got it. This one has been out for a long time now. I, I want to say a long time, a good several years. <laughs> it's Miss Peregrine's Brian's Home for Pecu Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I got the hardcover because it was cheaper than the softcover, which was a surprise in itself. A mysterious island and abandoned orphanage, a strange collection of very peculiar photographs. So that's all that really describes it a little bit. Oh, here we are. As our story opens, a horrific family tragedy sets 16 year old Jacob journeying to a remote island off the coast of Wales, where he discovers the crumbling ruins of Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children. As Jacob explores its abandoned bedrooms and hallways, it becomes clear that Miss Peregrine's children were more than just peculiar. They may have been dangerous. They may have been quarantined on a deserted island for a good reason, and somehow impossible, though it seems, they may still be alive. I've seen the movie, I will admit. It's not what got me to read it. I just was thinking about it one day, and I was like, you know, that's one of the books I saw at Walmart a while back. I was interested in it before the movie came out and um, I was like, you know what, I'm finally going to read it. <laughs> so I, I purchased it. Reboot by Amy Tintara. I hopefully I pronounced that right. Five years ago, I died. 178 minutes later, I woke up. I've seen this on booktube also. It says, five years ago, Red Colony, Col Colnoli died. After 178 minutes, she came back as a reboot. Stronger, faster, able to heal, but also less emotional. The longer reboots are under, the less human they are when they return, making Ren 178 the deadliest reboot in the Republic of Texas. Now 17 years old, her favorite part of her job is training new reboots, but her latest newbie is the worst she's ever seen. I'm not gonna read too much of these descriptions because it's gonna take too long, but I've this sounds really cool, the concept of it, 
Um, it was described as a zombie book, but because they come back to life. But I don't really consider it a zombie book because they don't act like zombies. Like even the Hadian, Haiti related zombies don't act like this. So I don't really consider this a zombie book, but I was really interested in it. And lastly, Vicious was also uh, mentioned by a couple of booktubers. Vicious is by V.E. Schwab? Schwab? Victor and Eli started out as college roommates, brilliant, arrogant, lonely boys who recognized the same sharpness and ambition in each other. In their senior year, a shared research interest in adrenaline, near-death experiences, and seemingly supernatural events reveals an intriguing impossibility that under the right conditions, someone could develop extraordinary abilities. But when their thesis, thesis moves from the academic to the experimental, things go horribly wrong. Uh, when it was described to me, it was described to me as like a superhero slash anti-villain, anti-hero slash villain type of scenario. It says right here, a bonus stor short, short story from the villain's universe. So, and it does have a sequel. I don't know if I'm going to read the sequel because I heard it was terrible. Well, not terrible, but not great because the first book was so good. So the second one didn't come out as great as people were hoping it would. But I might read it because if this is really as good as to say, I'm going to not judge it. Just because other people say it's bad, I'm going to try it out, I guess. So that's all the books that I purchased recently. But they were all really, really cheap. I don't buy them in great condition. I buy them in used condition. Because it doesn't bother me if they're a little worn and torn. Because I kind of like it that way. It just adds character to the book. So <laughs> I like it that it's a little worn and torn. So that's why they're so cheap. <laughs> but there's really interesting books here so I'm excited to read them. I also bought Me Before You because I watched the movie and Amelia Clark is like my favorite actress. So <laughs> I'm reading the book and I'm pretty decently way through. It's pretty good so far but that's another good book. It's a romance so I hope you guys enjoyed the little talk about books and I hope I inspired you to watch, uh, read some yourself. Look at our yard. Zach needs to go out there and trim it up bad. It's all nice and windy right here, but there's no wind anywhere else. Tessa wants to go outside. Right. Right, Tessa. I mean, I still got all those boxes. I filled one up. This is filled up completely. I just gotta take it outside. I think I'll do that right after I'm done with this. And this is still a little bit of a mess. I was towed this morning at 10 o'clock, being woken up by my husband, that we're getting three new pieces of furniture. Where am I supposed to put those furnitures? Where am I supposed to, I don't have room. Like that's all the room that I have and it's taken up by boxes that need to be storage somewhere. And like in furniture. <laughs> that's a lot of boxes to move to move in furniture. So I have to do a lot of cleaning today because he's having someone bring it over. With all that furniture, I have a lot of cleaning to do. I have to move all my makeup into the hut set down in the living room now. I have to put all the clothes in the dresser. I have to help Zach put manga and games and everything in there. And um, I have to empty boxes and or we're going to put in the water heater room. With all the new furniture that we have, now I have to start moving all these books that are Zach's into his cabinet in the bedroom. And then I have to move his video games. And then I have to go through all those boxes and organize them and get rid of what I don't want and see if I can unpack them and put them somewhere. And that's just a lot of work to do 
before he decides to shove everything into the water heater room. So I went through the boxes and they're organized. Everything here is going to go into the heater, water heater room. It's still a mess though. I think it's more messier now than it was before. That's Zach's stuff he wants to keep out. I mean, look at this. It's, it's a mess. It's just a big mess right now. But I'm not going to deal with it until tomorrow. So, yeah. Oh, by the way, I organized the shelves. So now I have room for figurines and stuff. And my Game of Thrones uh, uh, ale, I think. That's a thing. Is it ale? Yeah, ales. So, my Game of Thrones ales. My collectibles. So, I finally finished my makeup hutch. Well, I, I finished it a couple days ago, but now I'm going to show you. <laughs> this is all my makeup that I currently have out. My lipsticks and my brushes and my collectibles and two masks. Nail polish, more masks, more lipstick. And then I have drawers of eyeshadow. And then I have facial, uh, face serums and liquids and other things in here, including face masks and my eye uh, eyelashes, my fake eyelashes. That's the makeup hutch. So this is Salem. Salem, hey, what's up? He's our new cat. He was my parents' cat, but he likes to play rough with other cats, and they have kind of, um, they have a sphinx that has some heart problems, and she can't play too much. And the other one, Mystic, is really, really old, and she doesn't like to play too much either. He has come here because our cats, at least Anubis, loves to play. Barbosa, on the other hand, doesn't. <laughs> But he's getting closer and closer to them. That's something. But he is getting along with the dog. Tessa. Right, Salem. Uh, we have to do those boxes. You can't see. Let me click closer. So we're going to be putting these boxes. If I can get the two. There we go. These boxes are going to go into the heat room. I have to take this one. Put it in the bedroom. This one. Put it in the bedroom. And all the rest will be going into the heat room. Yay! <laughs> and then we're gonna be moving this all the way over here. Although I kind of like it right here, but Zach wants me to move it all the way over here. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Not excited about it. Not excited at all. I'm starting to get some of the cardboard boxes into the large trash bags. Hi, Barbosa. Like so. So the boxes are gonna look a little bit sparse, which is good. And then I'm going to be throwing them out, not this week, but the week after, because my roommates have boxes to throw away this week, and they won't take a certain number of things. They'll only take a certain amount of number of things, and it'll be overloaded if I put these bags with them. So, I am cleaning it up as best as possible, so I can get rid of all of this stuff as well. And, um, then I just have to clean. Like, I'm the only one home right now. So I have to clean and eventually take a shower to get all this makeup off. Now after we got done messing with the hutch and got rid of all the boxes except for one, I have a big mess to clean all over the place. That's actually clean. Good job, Amanda. But look what Zach did for me. Look at that. Oh, nice and organized. And he put a mirror up and did the lights for me. But I have to clean up all this. Do the laundry, fold the laundry. Well, I already did the laundry. Now I just have to fold it. Clean up everything. Everything's a mess. We're finally putting the pictures up. And it's looking really good. Zach's helping. He's good at keeping things straight and everything. I, on the other hand, make no things crimp. No comment. <laughs> Alright, let's go check out the other places. You guys already seen that one. 
That one's the one from Poster Barn. Burner. Post Burner. Poster Burner. And then we have these ones. And we got ones in the bedroom. We also have one right here. And we have one um, up here. That's Zach's ones. It's Albedo. I don't know what her character is. Albedo. Albedo. Reyes Grimmery. Ganyu. Ganyu. And that's from um, Genshin? You have no sense of life glare, baby. No, I don't. We also put security lights above our bed for when we go to sleep or if we want to read. They're technically called security lights because they're motion sensor, but these are so cool. They're magnetic. They fit on like refrigerators and everything. It's so cool. And guess what? It's not just motion sensor, just an on light with a USB charger. These things are awesome. <laughs> I have no idea how excited I was about those. I was like, no way. And yeah, the lights and. He's gonna be putting lights in there. Eventually. Yeah, that's his cabinet. So is mine. That's both of ours. And you could say it's both of ours. I just allow you to put your stuff in there. Uh -huh.